Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Let's get going. We'll begin with problem number 65. Today, the so called problem is actually not a problem. We're going to learn today how to express a given quantity, a given number, in the language of algebra in the language of algebra. Say for example, say for example I have a quantity 7. But of course in algebra we don't have known quantities. That's the difference that is exactly what makes algebra algebra. The difference between algebra and arithmetic is that in arithmetic problem we deal with quantities that are known, with quantities that we can see, that we can add and subtract, the quantities that we're used to dealing with in our daily lives. Seven dollars, yes I understand seven dollars. But when was the last time you went to went to buy uh, uh, buy a toy at the store and the clerk asked you for why dollars? Never. But that's what it is in the language of algebra. We're dealing with unknown quantity. Here, y equals seven. Very simple. Very straightforward. Y is some quantity. We don't know what it is, but it is some integer, positive integer, because we are doing putting a dollar sign next to it. It's some quantity. Whatever quantity it is, we don't know. If it happens to be 7, then y is equal to 7. But what happens if it happens to be 37? Keep listening. A 37. So if I tell you that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 7, how do I express a notion of 37 in the language of algebra? One more time. How do we express a notion of 37 in the language of algebra if x equals 3 and y equals 7? We cannot write this thing as x y dollars. We cannot. We cannot put x y dollars just because x is 3 and y is 7. We cannot. Why not? Because in the language of algebra, listen very carefully, because in the language of algebra x y dollars in the language of algebra means 3 times 7 dollars. But that's not what you meant to say. You did not meant to say 21 dollars. You meant to say 37 dollars. How do I express that notion? How do I express this concept? using the algebraic notation in the language of algebra as I keep repeating like a parrot. That's very simple. What we need to understand here is what we need to understand here is that this 3 that you see here in 37 the 3 that you see there is not a 3. It's a 10 digit. This is the 10 digit and this is a unit digit. Of course everybody knows that. So what's the big deal? Well, because it is 10 digits, this 3 is not a 3. This 3 is telling you how many 10s I have. That's why it's called 10 digit. This 3 tells me how many 10s I have. I have 3 10s. 3 10s are 30 plus a 7. And 3 equals x. So there we go. Now we are done. Now we are done. This was wrong. We don't represent $37 like that. This is $21. This is not thirty-one dollars. This 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 is not this is not thirty-seven dollars. That would have been twenty-one dollars. That's that's wrong. We don't do it like that. It's going to be like this. X is three. X is three. So it's ten. Ten. Technically, let me write it the way it is. X is three. So it's x times ten plus y. X times ten plus y. But of course, we don't say x times ten. We we write the coefficient first. So it's ten x plus y. Voila. There you go. This is the number we're dealing with. This is the number we're dealing with. If x happens to be 3 and y happens to be 7, if x happens to be 3 and y happens to be 7, then this quantity represents 37. Not that quantity. That quantity, one more time, x, y dollar, assuming that x is 3 and y is 7, is 3 times 7. This represents $21, not $37. Let's learn how to how to represent a three digit number, shall we? Let's do a three digit number. So here's the question. The digits of a number are digits of the number that we're going to talk about are x, y, and z. Again, reading from left to right of course because that's how we read numbers if we have 245 of course we read from left to right 245 245 reading from left to right 
The question is, what's the number? How do we express that? Let's do it here. Let's do it here. We can erase all of this thing. We're going to represent 245. Or maybe we can do it here. 245. And to keep the complications, uh, to, to obviate the complications, we're going to use different symbols. I changed my mind. Let's not use x, y, and z because here we have in this in this problem we have x and y. Let's use different 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 variables. How do we? How, how about p, q, and r? P, q, and r. So that we don't confuse the two quantities. So here, p is equal to two. In this in this case, in this example, p happens to be two. Q happens to be 4 and R happens to be 5. But the question is, how do I represent 245? I shouldn't write it like this. It's a 245 is what it is. 245. Which is, which is, this 2 tells us how many hundreds we have. We have 2 one hundreds. This tells us how many tens we have. We have 4 tens. And this tells us how many ones we have. We have 5 ones. By one, which is why it's called unit digit. Unit digit, ten digit, and the hundred digit. P, Q, R. So let's replace them now. Let's replace them. Two is the P. Or oh, rather, I meant to put two there. That's the P. So that's your P right here. Q is four. That's your Q. And R is 5. That's it, we are done. So now we have to finish this thing up. So we have 2 times 100, which is the same as P times 100. P times 100. Plus 4 times 10. Q times 10. Plus R times 1 is just R. We are not going to worry about 1. Technically it is R times 1. But it really doesn't do anything. Again, we cannot leave it like this. We don't when we're writing the algebraic expression, we don't say p 100 plus q 10. We don't say that. We put the coefficient first. So this is going to be written as 100 p plus 10 q plus r. One more time. One more time. 245 in the language of algebra is to be written as 100 p plus 10 q plus r where p happens to be 2, q happens to be 4, and r happens to be 5. 245. You understand? Let's do the next problem, shall we? Let's do the next problem up here. The next problem is So this is your 65A and 65B. What number, what number will be will be formed if the if the digits were reversed? If you reverse the digits, what number will be formed? And of course, when you're dealing with arithmetic numbers, it's very straightforward. 245, when you reverse the digits, will become 542. 542. The 4 will remain 4 in the middle. 5 will become a 100 digit, and 2 will become a unit digit. How do we represent that? That 5 is your R. So it's going to be R times 100. I meant to say R times 100, not 5. R times 100, which is this. Now the fact that I just sloppily, I just sloppily switch from a small letter to a capital letter, don't make a fuss about it, okay? Don't, 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 don't be so nitpicky. It was inadvertent, you understand? It doesn't, don't read too much into it, they are still the same symbol. Plus 4 times 10, 4 is our Q, so it's going to be Q times 10, plus P. That's it. Again, we cannot leave it like this. This number, this number right here, this number right here, return in, uh, written, written in reverse order, when the digits are reversed, is going to look like this. 100R plus 10Q plus B. 
it is this number written when the digits are reversed when the digits are reversed let's do the next problem shall we problem number 66 problem number 66 I need the room what is the sum of what is the sum of three consecutive numbers if we are told that x is the least one what's going to be the sum of three consecutive number if we are told that x is the least one we are done with all of this thing I'm going to give you an abstracted view for a few seconds and then I'm going to raise everything x is the least one and they are consecutive if they are consecutive if x is the least one and since they are consecutive the one after that is going to be one more so whatever x happens to be x has some value we do not know whatever it is if it's 7 the next one is going to be 8 which is one more than x and if this is 7 the next one is 8 which is one more than 7 and the next one after that is going to be two more than that x plus 2 there you go and the question is what is their sum what is their sum so fine let's find their sum x plus x plus x is 3x and then 1 plus 2 is 3 this is the sum the sum equals 3x plus 3 but we can't leave it like this in this ugly form we have to take out anything that is a common factor 3 is a common factor so s equals to 3 when we take it out common we end up with x plus 1 because you see when you open the parentheses you're going to get 3x plus 3 so the answer is s equals 3 times x plus 1 what is their product let's do it here so this is 66a let's do 66b down here what is their product and the product is very straightforward we're just going to leave the product as it is we're not going to do much fuss about it it's just x times x plus 1 plus x plus 2 that represents this notation represents their product this notation represents their sum there is not much simplification we can do here. If we were to open the parentheses, we're going to end up making it more complicated. It's not going to be in simplified form. This is in the simpl most simplified form. If we open the parentheses, it's going to begin to look more ugly. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.